Welcome to this video. This is a video about how to make folders and how to copy files around in a directory. This is a very substantial um, video. It's a very useful to be able to copy files to make things that back up and so on and so forth. I'm going to open up Notepad++ and as always start with at, at echo off. Change my language to batch. And now I'm going to start with my first command, MD, make directory. And in parentheses, I'm going to have the name of the directory that I want to make. In this case, I'll have um, copy files. So I'll make a folder called copy files, and I'll call this uh, copy.bat and put it on my desktop. There we go. And if I double click this, it makes a folder called copied files. Now, um, how about a command? Well, b before I move on, what if I want to move this batch file into this folder? Well, then when I double click it, it makes a folder inside of my folder. So wherever this batch file is located, it will make that folder inside of where it currently is. What if I have this in a folder, but I want to make it on my desktop? Then I use a file path. Um, it's pretty easy to find the file path to your desktop if you don't know it. You can go to something on your desktop, right click and say properties, and it says, oh, this is located on C users Joseph desktop. So I'll move this back to where Notepad++ knows it is. And I'm going to add a directory, make a directory on C users and then username in uh, percent signs will make sure that your batch file will make a username depending on what computer it's on and then desktop copied files um, I'm considering making a video on uh, folder paths for those who aren't familiar with it. And if I end up making it, you'll find it here. Otherwise, I'll, my mouse would point it to an arbitrary space on the screen. Now, we should be able to make a folder on this folder path no matter where my program's at. So to test it, I'm first off going to save it and then move it so Notepad++ won't freak out. And when I double click copy, even though it's in a different directory, it should still make a folder on my desktop. There it is. So now no matter where this is located, I can create a folder in a specified location. So now that I made this folder called copied files, I want to be able to copy files from this folder to this folder. And once again, looking into this folder, I have some pictures of cars and I open it up and I have another folder full of more pictures of cars. Um, so I want to run a command that will copy these files from one place to another. And to do that, I use the xcopy command. xcopy. I want to have location 1 as a generic outline and location 2. And um, I'm going to put a double colon in front so it doesn't execute this, just as a note. So to start off, xcopy, and then my first location, um, Windows Explorer is great about this. I double click here and then I can just grab this. So when I find a location, I just say I want to do inside this folder. So I double click on the folder that I want to copy the things inside of. Control C, Control V. So I'm saying it's on my C drive, users folder, um, username. I'm going to switch that to username. on the desktop in the pictures folder. So everything in the pictures folder and then location two, where I want to copy it to is right here. So let's see how that works. First off, there may be a few things that we need to do further. I'm going to save that and then I'm going to run this. And it copied all of our car pictures. But the problem is it didn't copy the folder also. It just copied the pictures, not the folder inside of the folder. So if I wanted to copy a folder inside of a folder, 
then on the very end I'm going to say slash s and that means copy all subdirectories. So if I run the program again it asks me um, do I actually want to copy this? And I'm going to say yes I actually want to copy this. I want to overwrite this? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so it asks me about copying files in the subdirectory and I don't want to have to answer that all the time. This is a batch file and the point is being all autonomous. So it kind of takes away from the whole point of having a batch file. So to suppress it from asking me, I'm going to say slash Y right here. And now I can even delete this folder and I'm going to rerun the program and it won't ask me anything. It will just do it because of this slash Y. Boom. And so now we have um, our pictures and everything we have an exact copy of what we have from our pictures folder. A few other things that will come in handy if I run this program again it recopies everything that was very very quickly because there wasn't very many files but when you start talking about files that take up like five gigs it can recopy everything take a lot of system resources not good so I'm going to add in a slash D and what the slash D in the code does is it says I'm going to look at the last modified date of every file before copying and if there's a more recent version I'm going to copy the more recent version from this folder to this folder if there is if they're the same version I'm going to skip it so it's the slash date sign um, and that should come very much in handy because now you notice when this pops up there's just one line of code and it says zero files copied. If I take off this, in fact, I'll put a pause so you can see what I'm talking about. Zero files copied because they're all up to date. If I say no slash D, then it copied 11 files because it recopies everything. So always put a slash s and slash d to make sure that everything is completely copied. One other thing sometimes the program may not be able to know if we're copying from a directory or not so it's handy to backslash star dot star and then in the other location backslash star dot star and it helps to identify directories. Another thing that will be um, very handy is if I go to my command line CMD we talked about slash s and slash d and what they mean but if I copy if I put in x copy slash question mark then it comes out with slash w slash v slash e slash s all these different um, slash commands and they will have a description of the function that they do so you can do things like copy hidden folders and you can have it to prompt you if you want it to. It, each one of these helps you to fine-tune exactly what you want your xcopy to be. And for uh, demonstration's sake, if I pull up this one last time and I um, say so put in a Word document and in this Word document I have hello in backwards caps. There we go. And I save it. <laughs> That's for a class. Then I copy it over here. And so I have these two identical directories because of the xcopy function. And it also says hello. Then I add in, how are you? So now this one says, hello, how are you? This one does not. This one only says hello. But if I X copy it, now it says hello, how are you? So it updates all of the files in addition to copying them over. This is a great way, again, to back up your files. Now notice if I rename something, if I call this engine, what is X copy going to do when I go to copy everything from here to here? It creates another document called engine, but it keeps the original. 
That can be a problem when you go to back up your files because if something gets renamed or if something moves a directory, you have duplicate files. And I'm going to discuss the solution to that problem in the next video. Hope you have a nice day. If this is helpful, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time.